Hey beautiful Leo, welcome to your tarot reading for whenever you find it. Timing is divine, so this reading is timeless, but the energy I am working in is the end of October and November 2024. This is a life path reading for the month ahead for you beautiful Leo. Um, I'm using the Halloween Oracle and the Seasons of the Witch Samhain Oracle for your Oracle cards, and we'll do a life path with the Trick or Treat Tarot. Spirit, what is the energy of Leo for the month ahead? What is Leo's path moving forward for the month ahead? Thank you, Spirit. One more time. All right. Beautiful. So you have the Fool, Ten of Cups. I love it. <laughs> the Moon, and Seven of Wands. What does this path lead to, Spirit? What does this path lead Thank you. Okay. You have the star. Very, very good. What a beautiful reading already. Ten of Pentacles. OMG. <laughs> Leo. The Emperor. And the Queen of Swords. All right. And we will get clarifiers for some of these cards. But these are your advice cards. Seven of Wands and the Queen of Swords. And your path goes... Fool, Ten of Cups to Moon. So there's a lot of feelings here. The Ten of Cups and the Moon is a culmination of emotion. Beautiful emotion. Um, with the Fool, this is an exciting new path ahead. This is you starting something new. It could be you starting a new job, new school program, a new career, a new business, new relationship with the Fool. You have a long way to go. You know, you are perhaps apprehensive about the path ahead. Am I ready? Am I prepared? Do I have all the tools needed? That kind of thing. And there's always a reassurance if the fool card is asking this. The next card is the magician, which literally means you do have everything needed to be successful on this path. But it's really a matter of waking up to what it is that you have to offer. That's really what this path ahead is all about. For you to wake up and to understand yourself more, to appreciate yourself more, and to feel more at liberty putting yourself out there. When ultimately, I know that this is a costume, but ultimately you'll be able to take the mask off, the, the veil off, and show the world who you really are. That's what this path is leading to, beautiful Leo. And then you have the Ten of Cups. This is a Ten of Cups with the moon. This is a really good feeling, my friend. Uh, Ten of Cups is total wish fulfillment. You know, it's all your hopes, wishes, and dreams coming true, or many of your hopes, wishes, and dreams coming true. And it doesn't all have to come true at the same time. This can be um, having been realized, look, looking back on your path and saying, wow, look how far I've come, or wow, we actually did it in some way. And the moon is just a strong feeling card, but there is a lot to the moon. The moon is overcoming your fears. So, you, you know, the moon with the fool says that you will be overcoming your fears on some level. Um, these are fears that don't have a place in your life. They're only there as um, something for you to overcome. They don't actually serve you, you know. These could be self-imposed limitations that you embrace as your fears um, that, you know, might stop you moving forward. And really, if you look at the visuals here, you have your um, little sheet here, right? And it's covering up your head and you're feeling really bedraggled. And it leads to this... Um, unveiling of your head so you're receiving guidance this is a huge crown chakra opening here right receiving guidance from spirit arms open mind open arms open heart open eyes open to, to receive guidance you know the moon is definitely receiving guidance and this leads to the star the ultimate card of receiving guidance so I feel like you're going to quickly know that you do have what it takes, that you do, that you are empowered, um, that you have everything needed to be successful in whatever this new endeavor is. And here you have this black cat, which is your intuition. And then you have these dogs, which is your instinct, right? So you're, you know, you are on many levels prepared for this and already successful on this path. Now, where this path leads 
is pretty powerful. So you have 10 of cups to 10 of pentacles. Two tens is very, very powerful. This is some ending energy with two tens. So ending something that you felt really strong about, ending something that you have uh, accumulated, worked for. This could be the end of a career, end of a job in favor of a new one. Two tens with a fool, you know, ending a relationship in favor of a new one. Um, ending a living situation in favor of a new one. It's going to be different things for different Leos, but you already know what we're talking about here. You know, so this is just exciting for you because this new path brings healing. The star card is a very healing energy, and it's also um, like being on a stage, shining bright, having influence, being an influencer, growing your audience. You know, you've reached a point with the Fool card, you know, you're starting something here. But here you've reached a point where you um, are able to share your wisdom, able to um, to um, shine your light so that others lead by example, right? So I'm not saying that within a month you're going to start at zero and end up a hero, right? A lot of you may. You may come to understand what you actually have to offer and, you know, allow your light to be seen. But um, for a lot of you other beautiful Leos, this is starting something new while well, some things end in your life and some things are empowered or leveled up. You know, you really have a lot going on here with two tens, the fool and the moon. So yeah, and star also is a very, very healing energy. And this is also a very connected energy. You know, this moon with the big crown chakra I was talking about, receiving that guidance from spirit, you have a lot of um, energy from your gods, guides, and guards speaking to you right now and, and, and in the month ahead. So keep keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, stay open to receive that wisdom and guidance, you know. And the Ten of Pentacles, you know, I have to say, with the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles, this is your path and this is where it leads. The Ten of Cups is like the ending of, um, again, it is the fulfillment of many hopes, wishes, and dreams, but it's the ending. Because they have been fulfilled, they've ended. So you're um, changing your mind about things that you wanted. You're changing the path, a lot of you, saying, you know what? We we got a peek behind the curtain and the wizard is not what we thought he was, right? So we're going to kind of change our path, yeah? So this is the Ten of Pentacles. This is where it leads. This is a material fulfillment. This is getting a raise, getting a boon, getting an inheritance. For, for some of you beautiful Leos, Ten of Pentacles is definitely inheritance energy. Um, it's having a um, receiving a legacy leaving a legacy you know that kind of big energy right so um but it's also um you've worked hard you've worked a long time you've invested you've saved you've done everything that you should do or you've done some things that are beneficial toward your accumulation of wealth savings you know um being able to buy a house for a lot of you and i feel like again you know, a lot of you are starting a new job or a new career or a new business that leads to quick success. Um, and even if it's not quick success, it's early signs that help you to be sure that you are on the right path. You know, the emperor, this is owning your life. This is stepping into your power. You know, you're going from the fool to the emperor. That's just, I mean... This is a big leap for you, beautiful Leo. The Fool, again, is that, that new childlike energy. And the Emperor is very, very mature, war-hardened, an absolute authority in his life. And I say his because this is the divine masculine taking charge. It's going on a diet. Setting, um, setting up structures, schedules, budgets, um, you know, putting things in order, making sure, you know, I see such success, such quick success in some way that you're like, we need to figure out how to manage this, you know, so you're becoming a manager of your life. 
and uh, that's really, really exciting. Now let's get some clarifiers. Before we talk about your advice here, let's get some clarifiers for beautiful Leo. Let's clarify the Fool. Thank you. Fool is clarified with the King of Cups. Let's clarify these two tens. The Ten of Cups, please. Thank you, Spirit. Ten of Cups is clarified by the Two of Swords. And the Ten of Pentacles is clarified by the Queen of Cups. So that's lovely. You have both the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups and the Ten of Cups in your reading. For some of you beautiful Leos, this is a relationship reading that we have here. So um, it's love. It's a lot of beautiful feelings. Again, like I said, with the Ten of Cups and the Moon, there's a swell of feelings. Uh, but these are good feelings. But this is an emotional month for you, Leo family. One more clarifier, please. Let's clarify the star. No, let's not. Here we are. Here. Seven of Cups clarifies the star. All right, so that fool energy, that kind of new, unsure, uncertain, first steps energy is clarified with the King of Cups. This is deeply, deeply feeling energy. The King of Cups is very subconscious. So your apprehensions are anchored in your subconsciousness. This is the depths of a lake, of, of, of an ocean that you can't see, that you can't possibly reach, that can be very um, intimidating. You don't want to dive down that deep. You know, an iceberg above the water looks like a mountain, but what's underneath is so much more. That's the King of Cups. There's so much underneath the surface for you, Leo, right? So it's hard for you to um, deal with whatever it is that's making you feel unprepared in this in this case at, at this time. And that's not like you, Leo. Leo, you're more of the emperor by nature. You know, you don't have usually a lot of self-doubt, Right. And that's what we're talking about. So whatever steps you're taking now is dealing with some shadow that you haven't dealt with or haven't needed to deal with up until now. And this is great. This is very, very healthy. Dealing with your shadow, facing with your shat or facing your shadow is ultimately what every step will lead to. Right. So this is a beautiful progression in your life. And then. Ten of Cups with the Two of Swords. Two of Swords is an uneasy truce. It's um, two aspects of your life that don't get along with one another. So you, uh, it could be a, a relationship that doesn't get along with your work situation because your work keeps you so long from your loved ones, perhaps, from your family or romantic interest or, you know, friends, um, that they are at odds with your with with one another you're like i feel stressed in order to uh be able to spend time with my loved one or my loved ones because of this career that i have and the uneasy truce is it's not going to be able to hold for long this could also be two different relationships in your life that don't approve of one another um you know they're getting along for now because it you know they don't want to stress you out or upset you but there's no way that they can coexist in your life for a long period of time. A living situation that keeps you far from your work so that you have to drive a long time to get there. Such a long commute makes it unsustainable. Eventually, you're going to have to either move closer to work or change your, your job. You know, that kind of uneasy truth, t Ten of Cups, this is an end, um, a culmination of a bunch of hopes, wishes, and dreams. Something that you had wished for, had dreamt of, had really loved, had fulfilled you is coming to an end because it's not getting along with another part of your life. You know, um, it's just going to be another one of the headstones in this grave. And that, you know, I can't help but notice the similarity in these pictures. <laughs> Here are all these cups. These are hopes, wishes, and dreams that have been manifest in your life, right? Here are a bunch of tombstones. They're buried, dead, done, and over with now. So I feel like some of these, or one of these, or many of them, or even all of them, you're putting to bed and saying goodbye to because they don't serve you and they don't get along with something, some other aspect of your life that you need to put above them that you're valuing more than things that you had valued in the past the star card again the seven of cups is kind of like that two of swords it's having to make a choice 
you know. It says pick the poison and pick it wisely, you know, because some poisons will kill you. <laughs> so not to be overly dramatic, but, you know, that is, if I'm just, I'm seeing what I'm seeing, beautiful Leo, and this message isn't for all of you, but for some of you, be very, very careful about the choices that you make at this time. Some of these beautiful choices are here to benefit you and will benefit your life moving forward. Others are very, very detrimental to you, you know, and I don't get that message often, but it's just coming to me and I have to say it. I have to say what I see. So there you go. Um, but with the star card, this is a healing energy. This is standing on stage. This is receiving guidance. This is being a star and being guided by the stars. And the seven of cups is making this choice. Lean into that spiritual intuition. Let spirit tell you what to choose. Spirit is telling you that it's going to help you make the right choice for you. You know, so just stay tapped into spirit. You know, do your daily practices, whatever it is that you do. To, to, to feel close. For me, every morning, I read my tarot cards or I pull, at least pull an oracle card and I put it on my altar. You know, it's as simple as that. Every now and then, I'll do some mantra. I'll pull out my mala and I'll do a mala mantra, 108 repetitions, um, whatever I feel that I need at the moment. You know, that's all I need to, to feel grounded. Other people just pray, you know. They, they, they'll use their mala as prayer beads and just ask for prayers or to count their blessings. But I really feel like this is a time to really take advantage of that connection to your God's guides and guides because it's so strong for you, beautiful Leos. And the Ten of Pentacles clarified with the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is she values her emotion above all things. She follows her emotional guidance system and it has never led her astray. So if something doesn't feel right, she doesn't go in that direction. If only if it feels right, will she say yes. If it doesn't feel right, she won't say yes. She won't necessarily say no. She'll say, let me think about it. Don't be pressured into anything. Follow your heart. This is a time when, you know, if, if it was the Queen of Swords. Oh, and you have the Queen of Swords here. This is so interesting. The Queen of Swords puts her mind above her heart. And we'll talk about your advice cards here in a second. But here it is very, very clear. You know, I see this woman here and this woman here, and they look like the same woman, don't they? These are aspects of you. Ultimately, every card in the tarot is an aspect of you. This is your precious journey, Leo family. So Ten of Pentacles is that successful energy, that accumulation energy, that growing wealth energy, that end of an era, you know, um, having created a legacy or inheriting a, a, a legacy of sorts, right? Um, but whatever it is, this is on the material, in the material realm. And the Queen of Cups, um, em, em, emotional guidance. So follow your heart with regard to uh, your pursuit of accumulating wealth. Follow your heart um, with regard to your family business, family matters, um, things that are set in place and that have been set in place for you for a long time. You know, uh, I, I feel again that a choice must be made. You know, I keep getting this, this choice energy. So um, allow your emotional guidance system to be the, um, the final word on this. Um, and you will be very, very happy with the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups and the Ten of Cups, you know, with the star. There's a lot of happiness here, um, beautiful Leo, you know, and and never, never forget that you are the master of this life. I, I just, you know, it's not like Leo to let other people tell them what to do or how to move forward. But I'm getting that kind of message here that um, ultimately you will be stepping into your um, your role as dictator of your future. And, um, you know, that two of swords, yeah, here, that uneasy truce, part of that is other people's opinion, other people's ideas about what you should do moving forward. Right. And your advice, seven of wands and queen of swords, seven of wands is... Obviously, it's defending yourself against an onslaught of opinions of, or did I say seven of swords? If I did, clearly it's the seven of wands. So um, an onslaught of other people's energy. This can be uh, 
energetic vampirism, psychic vampirism for a lot of you and just keeping your um, keeping your space, right? Um, holding space for yourself. And it's not hard for you. I can see that in this specific deck, the seven of wands, this person is having fun. You can see a smile on their face. Like you're more than up to the task of warding this off and standing your ground, you know? So you're just being told to stay in your power, stay centered, hold up that um, uh, sword of truth. You know, the queen of swords, look, she's, she's holding up her sword here and he, and she is holding her sword here, you know, hold against, um, it feels like there's like some misleading information coming your way, or you are under a misconception, you know, so you need to, or you're being asked to open your eyes to the truth on a, on a higher level, open up your eyes, you know, here, her eye is being uncovered, that bandage was over her eyes, but now her eyes open. And this one, she looks like she's wearing glasses, right? Keep your eyes open to whatever it is that people are telling you. Be very, very discerning of what you listen to. And here she has this big, beautiful blue necklace on her neck, and she's wearing a blue jewel on her neck. Open your throat chakra. Allow your words to, to, to be said and heard. You know, don't hold your words back. Don't hold your truth. You know, put yourself out there. Be bold and know that you are the you are the master of this life. He's holding his sword. They're both hold she's holding her sword. She's holding her one. You know, um, definitely there is an energy coming at you. You know, and for some of you, this could be like a little bit of chaos. But if you just stay in your truth and 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 remember who you are, beautiful Leo, then you won't be knocked off your center in any way. Okay. So let's get some oracle cards for Leo for the month ahead. Thank you, Spirit. This is the Halloween Oracle. Show me Leo's card for the month ahead. Thank you. Mummy, change. There's definitely change here with the full card and the two tens. Um, and look at this. Look at that. Unbelievable. So, you know, it's bringing your attention to this mummy energy here for sure. And again, isn't that interesting? The eyes are uncovered in this card and the eyes are uncovered in this card. And they have this beautiful necklace or, or neck plate here with the blue stripes. And here you have the neck plate here and the moon behind of intuition and receiving that guidance from spirit. So this is a very consistent message for you, Leo. Uh, spirit wants you to, to keep in close touch this month, right? Spirit wants to um, give you the guidance that you need to navigate these changes um, for the best. And then... One from the Seasons of the Witch. Thank you, Spirit. Okay. Show us Leo's Oracle for the month ahead. Pumpkin. Uncaging the spirit within, thou the fertile power, within thou the fertile power you hold, to taste your buttery velvet upon tongue is a gift I shall cherish each day that comes. What a strange wording. All right, so I'm just going to read this really quick from the book because these cards are beautiful, but the meanings are so much deeper in the book than just what's written on the card. Okay. Pumpkins have been a tradition for Samhain for hundreds and hundreds of years. Jack-o'-lanterns were carved to scare away ghosts and goblins that were said to roam the streets on Samhain. Carving jack-o'-lanterns originally began with a variety of root vegetables, from turnips to potatoes. Pumpkins became the preferred method for the abundance of space for carving, and there is always plenty left over to fashion into dinner and desserts, even drinks. The pumpkin is more than a scare tool for the witch, however. It's a symbol of protection, fertility, and abundance. Protection, fertility, and abundance. We definitely got that from your reading. The, pumpkins repre the pumpkin represents the power of the womb. So it's no surprise that its color corresponds with the color of the sacral chakra. And its size is a symbol of prosperity, 
having enough to go around. Beautiful. You've pulled pumpkin today because you are protected and safe from harm. There is a presence around you, keeping the scary things away from your front door. You can rest easy knowing that your back is guarded. This card can also mean taking some steps to keep negative people out of your life. You know, definitely that, that, that vampirism, you know, that spiritual vampirism. You may need to reduce the amount of time you spend in some relationships or set firm boundaries. Doing so will allow you to put your energy where it is needed most. We don't read reversals when it comes to, um, to um, path readings, but this is a cool recipe if you want to take a if you want to stop your screen and, and write it down for pumpkin spice cake or spice pumpkin cake and then this is this the next page all right so i love this very beautiful leo fertility abundance protection i see a lot of change here just keep your eyes open and keep your throat chakra open let let your truth be heard and i will see you next time peace